I'm starting to think that you guys think that I only like Spider-Man. I'm a person. I like plenty of things. In fact, I love breakfast. And I think my toast is just about ready. Hello everyone and welcome back to Web Series Episode 7. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing just one game. And that game is... The 2002 Spider-Man Movie Game. I actually owned this game as a kid. This is my original copy, but I was never able to beat it until now. So, does it hold up? Let's find out. Made by Treyarch, this is the movie tie-in game for the 2002 Spider-Man film. This is the first Spider-Man game for the sixth generation, so let's see what kind of technical advancements they've made with this opening cutscene. So I found out later that this was happening because of the emulator, it's not how the game was shipped. So we can't really count this against them. After the intro cutscene, we get to the start and main menu screen. Both pretty forgettable, not really much else to say. Once we start the game, we get a little tutorial level. And this level is narrated by none other than Bruce Campbell. I love this man, he is so damn funny, his delivery for every line is perfect. Topic at hand is web swinging, but let's get one thing straight first. Do not try this at home. Your house isn't nearly tall enough, okay? Throw a punch with the square button. Ooh! And kick with the circle button. Yeah! -ha! It may not be pretty, but it gets the job done. Or if you just plain miss me, which, <laughs> who could blame you? Honestly, I think he has the best performance out of anyone in this game, especially better than Tobey Maguire. He did a good job in the movies. Why does he sound so bored here? Who are you? No, wait. Let me guess. Anyways, we learn the basic moveset and realize the big upgrade. You can swing on your webs as many times as you want. Today that might seem obvious, but back then this was the first 3D Spider-Man game that let you swing around all you want. Sure, it's basic, your webs don't attach to anything and there isn't any physics, but it's still a fun time to swing around. Then we get to our first enemy to practice combat, and then he says this. What you doing up here, pencil neck? Alright, go ahead, your line is... What you doing up here, pencil neck? What you doing up here, pencil neck? No, pencil. Here, pencil neck. What are you saying? Pencil. 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 What you doing up here, pencil neck? So after we beat the tutorial, Toby gives us a summary of his life up until Uncle Ben dies. He doesn't really seem all that upset, just kind of bored. Yeah, Toby, I'm kind of tired of seeing him die too. Then we get to web around the city and find Uncle Ben's killer. You can't go on the ground and the city's not big, but it's a huge step up from Enter Electro. Speaking of Enter Electro, this game uses the same web powers as that one. I actually enjoyed these, they were a fun way to mix up the combat. The other way you can add some spice to the fights is with combos. You find and unlock a ton of combos in the game and they can be super helpful without being overwhelming. Once you knock out enough bad guys, you find the warehouse where the killer is hiding out. This is an enclosed level and the game doesn't really shine here. It's best when you have some room to work with. These levels make me claustrophobic and don't give you enough room to swing and jump around. You find Uncle Ben's killer and he falls out of a window, just like the movie. We flash forward a while and you have the classic movie suit on, taking pictures for JJ. While doing that, you get attacked by these Oscorp robots. They aren't very fun to fight and you have to kill a lot of them to pass the mission. Just go to a rooftop and fight them there. It's much faster. This is a good time to talk about graphics. This is the first time that they went for a more realistic look rather than a comic art style. I have to say, I think it holds up pretty well. It's not winning any awards or anything, but it does still look decent, and the faces for the cutscenes do look like the actors. After we beat the robots, we see Shocker and Vulture running from a robbery and Spidey follows Shocker. We then fight him in a bank and we have to rescue some civilians. We chase him through some sewers that are more open than the other area, so it's a pretty good time. We find Shocker and this is our first boss fight. There's three tunnels and Shocker can only blast one at a time so you have to dodge his shockwaves by weaving in and out of the tunnels. It's pretty difficult, but I do have to give it points for being original. Once you get to him, you beat him up and move on to the vulture. 
This is one of the worst levels in the game. The controls really show their age in this tight staircase. And Toby just keeps saying jokes with the worst delivery. Once you get to the top, you chase Vulture out a window, and this is where it actually gets fun. This is what the Venom chase level from Spider-Man on the PS1 should have been. You have the speed and the webs you need to chase him, and it has a good amount about how much you can fall back before you fail the level. Once you catch up to him, you have an aerial battle with him, and it's pretty fun. I did have a hard time fighting him in the air though, so I just stayed on a building and let him come to me. You beat him up and then you go to the Daily Bugle. Easy money. When will I learn to keep my mouth shut? I don't know, Toby. It looks like you're doing a pretty good job of that right now. Around here is when I really started to notice the pattern of this game. You learn about a boss, you beat up some normal goons to get to the boss, you chase the boss, and then you fight the boss. And Scorpion's level is the same thing. It really isn't that different than Shocker or Vulture's. They do shake things up when they introduce Goblin. It follows the movie where he kills the board members at the parade, but now Mary Jean lands on a balloon and we have to go save her. Once we do, we get the best cutscene of all time. Are you alright? Yeah. Thanks. I have to go deal with, you know. Oh, yeah. Thanks again. No problem. Grab hold of a rogue balloon anytime. Rescuing damsels is my specialty. Go get him, Ty. I swear to God, I did not add any of that in. As you're talking to Mary Jane, the goblin drops bombs on both of you in the cutscene, and then the balloon falls, and a bunch of people are screaming. You can't make this up. After that amazing cutscene, we chase Goblin and have an aerial fight, then a ground fight, then another aerial fight, then another ground fight, and finally he runs away and you have to disarm some bombs that are going off around the city. The game gets super hard all of a sudden from here on out. There's a lot more insta-deaths or insta-fails for no reason other than to expand the length of the game. After we disarm all the bombs, we go to Oscorp, and earlier when I said the vulture levels were the worst in the game, I was a liar. These are the worst levels in the game. This is one of the longest ones in the entire game. It takes place in these small, tight rooms, and it's almost all stealth based. And this game does not have the best stealth mechanics. Going through this was a huge chore and I just wanted the level to be over already, but it just kept going. Then, right when I thought it was over, you have to fight a giant mech boss in the Oscorp building. Where was that in the movie? The Sam Raimi movies were grounded and didn't have Spider-Man as this Avenger alien fighting badass. He was a neighborhood Spider-Man. Why is he fighting this giant robot that basically insta-kills you if you get stuck on something? When you beat that atrocity of a boss battle, you're at the end of the game and you can finally fight Goblin on the bridge. This fight doesn't really feel any different than the rest of the Goblin battles, but fighting him on the bridge is a cool set piece. You beat him, he tries his classic glider trick, kills himself, and then you kiss Mary Jane on top of a literal dead body. Oh, and yeah, that's the most awkward kiss in gaming history, so, uh, congrats. Alright, that's the game. Or is it? This game has one of the coolest New Game Plus options I've ever seen. Once you beat the game on Hero difficulty, you unlock the Green Goblin as a playable character. You play as Harry trying to figure out what happened to his father. The levels are the same, but he has new dialogue and it's a lot of fun to use all of the glider's guns and bombs. This was a fun game, but it does show its age. But I'm a little nostalgic because I remember playing this game back when I was a kid. It was my first introduction to the world of Spider-Man games, and it'll always have a special place in my heart. You can call me bias, but I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of 10 goblins. Well, that was the first movie game. I really did enjoy it, honestly, and I'm glad I got a chance to replay it again. Unfortunately, though, that's all the time we're gonna have for for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, subscribe, and make sure to hit that bell button right next to the subscribe button to be notified the next time I upload. And you're gonna wanna see the next upload. It's the episode everyone's been waiting for. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.